Hi there, I'm Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiatoria and for the last couple of years I've been working with the Royal Armouries and Windlass to bring to you a range of swords which are more precise replicas than any that have been produced before. And I'm excited to announce that this range is finally just about to go on to sale. It will be available through all sorts of outlets, including in the Royal Armouries shop, incidentally, as well at the Royal Armouries in Leeds. Now, with the first range, it includes six swords, and we're going to be looking at those in upcoming videos. The first one that we're looking at here today is still in its box, freshly arrived for me to have a look at, and it is a 14th century arming sword, a one-handed sword. These swords have been measured intricately and have been um, developed and tweaked over a long period of time with various prototype stages to get to something which is as close to as possible despite the fact that each one of these is hand forged um, at windlass each one of these is hand forged so there's going to be tiny variations between each one but nevertheless they are as close as we can get to the originals which I have meticulously measured, weighed and done everything else with, even measured every little bit of the distal taper and every little detail of the original swords in the Royal Armouries. Therefore each of these swords comes in this very nice um, box and packed very well inside, we'll see in a second, with a certificate of authenticity. So let's have a little look at what's inside this box, let's take the lid off here, um, and you will notice that they are extremely uh, well packaged and I have specifically not unpackaged this yet because I wanted you to see how well packaged and um, completed these are. Now if we take this uh, first layer off here, there we go, you can see that the sword sits in custom made uh, fittings inside the uh, box. It is inside plastic which is um, oiled and completely protected. It includes Windlass's own and Royal Armour's Windlass um, uh, wax to essentially help, uh, it's a polished stroke wax, to help preserve your sword and look after it. This is the scabbard and this is a very important point. All of these swords come with leather covered wood lined scabbard. So unlike lots of other high end replicas out there, we provide a scabbard with you as well. Um, so let's get this sword unboxed and have a look at this first sword of the six sword range of the initial range. Just before I unbox that I just want you to see that your certificate of authenticity, that is that this is precisely uh, made on the statistics gathered by yours truly here uh, from the Royal Armouries, um, comes in a very nice little uh, velour kind of um, package in here. There we go, let's get that out. And there we go. So you can see there is your certificate of authenticity from uh, signed by myself, um, Sudhir, the um, chairman of Windless Steelcrafts and uh, Rod Taylor at the Royal Armouries. So now I've unboxed it, let's have a look at the sword and let me tell you, you are in for a treat because this is absolutely gorgeous. I am so pleased with how this has come out. This incidentally um, has been through two prototype stages um, to get to this point. It has been compared by myself and Henry Yallop, uh, the Keeper of Edge Weapons at the Royal Armouries, hand in hand, side by side with the real thing uh, to get to this final stage. Um, as noted, these swords all come with scabbards. They are leather covered, stitched at the back, uh, wood core with bronze chapes at the end. There's no locket at the top, they have uh, rain flaps if you want to call them that. Uh, but this is such an iconic sword. The original in the Royal Armouries is officially known in the catalogue as IX2141 and it's a late 13th, early 14th century arming sword. It could have been used by someone on foot with a sword and buckler, it could have been used with a shield, it could have been used on horseback as a knight's sword. In fact, the quality of this and the original is such that my guess is that it was probably a knightly sword. An interesting historical note about this sword is that it was actually found, we believe, in Rome. Uh, it was, so it was found in the 19th century in a peat bog, um, hence the original's fantastic state of preservation, which actually made um, replicating it pretty straightforward. There were no gaps to be filled, so to speak. It's a beautifully preserved sword, and I think this does it credit um, as a replication of it. Um, there are a handful, well, I think there's about two or three other swords in other collections around the world. I think there's one in Rome which are similar to this sword. So 
Current thinking is that it's probably originally an Italian sword and probably dates to around the year 1300. It has got very specific detailing to it, to the shapes. You'll notice the slight flare at the base of the blade there and then this almost, almost leaf-like curving edge down to the point. Double-edged, of course. Um, You'll notice it has a flattened diamond section down to here and then a very long and narrow straight filler up the centre on both sides. And you'll also be wondering probably what that strange symbol is on there and the, the answer is, so we called it the Toto mark and the fact is that we don't really know what it is. It's on the original, it's on both sides and it happens to be very close to the balance point as it turns out. You'll notice the balance point is actually on this sword relatively far from the hand um, and despite the fact that this might look like a uh, I won't say slender because it's actually really broad but it's a pointy sword and therefore very able to dish out very very um, effective thrusts against male armor and things like that and obviously unarmored people um, it's got a broad chopping blade and I tell you this is not a heavy sword it's just over a kilogram so it's 1.075 uh, 1.080 grams um, so it's not an especially heavy sword, but it has a lot of authority in the blade uh, because of that point of balance, quite similar to some cavalry sabers, I have to say. So my view is that this absolutely would have been an effective sword used in armoured fighting in this period predominantly with mail, or aka chain mail, uh, great helms, bassinets, shields um, from horseback and on foot, and this would have been a backup weapon to a lance or a spear. And, uh, and as I say, predominantly used with a shield, but could be used with a sword and buckler as well. But this is a formidable blade. It is just... It, oozes um, kind of fearsomeness. It is a big, fat, broad blade, but beautiful distal taper. Um, so if we flex it here, you'll notice it flexes in the second half of the blade because the distal taper on this exactly matches that on the real sword in the original sword that's in the Royal Armouries, which I've had the pleasure of handling uh, several times now. Um, you will also notice that it has an incredibly distinctive and memorable pommel shape and that was I will tell you no small <laughs> task to get that correct in fact that pommel is actually drawn by Ewart Oakshot in uh, Ewart Oakshot's book and he actually drew it slightly wrongly um, the the original uh, on the original sword which is um, replicated beautifully here it took a few tries for us to get it right it is a very specific shape with these little uh, I suppose you could call them almond shaped um, facets on either face and then coming out to a sort of wedge uh, cross section uh, front and back. This actually makes the sword very comfortable to handle and very nice against the base of the hand. You'll know that some wheel pommels and certain types of other swords can sort of bite into your hand or you have to handle them in a specific way to, to, for them to not be uncomfortable. This sword, you can basically hold it however you want, and that pommel's never uncomfortable against the base of the hand because you've got this nice sloped surface here where if you do extend the sword out, it, it sort of meets the heel of your hand down here with a curved, a curved flat surface, so it's very, very smooth. The grip, incidentally, is wood, hardwood covered with leather um, with a nice little neat join down there, so not much of a lip, and it's all uh, with ribbed underneath, so ribbed with um, cord underneath. And this is actually closely based on the replacement grip that's on the sword in the Royal Armouries. We decided on this for a couple of reasons. One, because actually the replacement grip that was put on, I think probably in the early 20th century in the Royal Armouries, is a, a, a good um, replica grip. It's completely historically plausible to what the original on the sword might have looked like, because obviously the wooden leather don't survive on the original one. Um, and we decided to stick with that for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a completely plausible replica grip for this particular sword, but additionally, it means that this replica looks like the one in the Royal Armouries as that currently looks on display in the case. And I think a lot of people will like that um, to be able to actually own the sword as it appears. And just to remind you, of course, that these are Royal Armouries officially certified and you can see the Royal Armouries mark down there, uh, which if you wanted to, you could remove. Um, it's only lightly etched on, but I think it's a nice thing having it on there. And this does come with that certificate of authenticity. 
As I mentioned, getting this blade shape right with that flare at the bottom and then this very gradual but bowed out. It's quite similar to certain later, uh, this is a Type 14, Oakshot Type 14 blade, but it's quite similar in overall outline to some later Type 18 blades, in fact, of the 15th century. So this is kind of advanced for its time, ahead of its time, and these getting the curve of these edges and the taper just right, um, as I say, was no small task. The cross guard as well, it was relatively simpler to get right than the blade and the pommel, uh, but nevertheless it has got some interesting details to it. It's got this slight swell in the middle, obviously curving up quillons, and these little points um, at the end here. Which, yep, admittedly, if you were in close combat, you could use those points as offensive weapons uh, to actually hit with or jam into a, the, the vision slot of a great helm or something like this, supposedly. Um, this is a monster a beautiful uh, monster of an arming sword and I think anyone would be delighted with the way that this handles um, but as I say it has authority don't think because it's pointy it's um, the most nimble sword in the world this is a sword which it moves nicely it tracks nicely through the air uh, but it's not the most nimble sword. It hits with a lot of power and um, sharpened correctly. And these can be obtained. These will be obtained uh, either sharp or what we call butter knife. Uh, so it, actually it's less than that. It's, it's like just without the final honing on. Uh, but sharpened up, these will be formidable, formidable uh, cutting swords. A beautiful, beautiful thing with a scabbard ready to attach to whatever belt system you want to do so. Um, and... Um, and obviously it goes in there um, very nicely. Sits like that with the rain guard protecting uh, water from getting down into the scabbard. So I hope you've enjoyed that brief review. Um, it has been a pleasure to work on these swords with the Royal Armouries and with Windlass. Windlass have absolutely excelled themselves. The edge geometry has been um, really perfected, I think. Um, the distal taper, everything else. This is a one-to-one -one replica of what you can go and see in the Royal Armouries. And as far as I'm aware, it's the first time that a replica this close to the original has ever been made. So look out for my following videos where we'll be looking at the other five. So there are six in the first batch of swords we're doing with Royal Armouries. There are six swords. There are five more to look at, so watch out for those videos. And there'll be an announcement soon about how you can get your hands on one of these. Thanks for watching.